Hello. So here I am uh, sitting in the back room at church, uh, ready to go with you just another short section of the Bible. And last week we started looking at the section in the Sermon on the Mount that is called Treasures in Heaven. And instead of just going through these five verses in one week, I explained that actually these treasures in heaven, as much as it's five verses, goes over three different subjects, really. So instead of just blowing through all three, I'm going to slow down and just look at each one in turn. Last week, we looked at verses 19, 20 and 21. And this week, literally, we're just going to look at uh, verses 22 and 23, Matthew 6, verses 22 and 23 which says this, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? As I say, we're continuing this section that's called Treasures in Heaven. But these two verses turn to our eyes. These verses simply remind us that our eyes are the lamp to the body. So really, whatever we spend a lot of our time looking at will creep into our hearts and our inner workings, our inner life. Growing up, I was a massive fan of cartoons on the telly. And one of my favourite cartoons growing up was DuckTales, uh, the Disney cartoon with the main character, which was Scrooge McDuck. And Scrooge McDuck loved money. I mean, literally loved money. His world was built around it. And in the credit sequence at the start of DuckTales, uh, there is a sequence where he's seen in a swimming costume, swimming through an ocean of gold coins. This image is almost seared on my brain as I think about what the love of money can mean to some people. Whenever there was an opportunity in DuckTales for Scrooge McDuck to get more money, he would take it. And actually, not only would he take it, but the animators to show how much he wanted that money and how much he loved that money, they would turn his eyes into dollar signs. Hmm. They even made a movie of DuckTales all about uh, finding some forbidden treasure. And I don't remember a lot of it, but I know and I remember there's one shot where Scrooge McDuck sees the treasure for the first time. And the animators give a close up uh, of Scrooge McDuck's eyes. And within the and literally the only image that is filling the pupils of his eyes is the treasure that is consuming him. That's in front of him. When I read these verses, it's these images that come into my mind. But again, like I said last week, if we limit treasure to only being about money and jewels, then we can miss just the depths of what Jesus is talking about here. What we spend our time on, uh, what we spend our time looking at can easily become our treasure and it easily affects our hearts and easily brings darkness into our lives. Hours scrolling for that dream fast sports car can easily turn what is a fantasy to a dream to an unhealthy desire for that fast sports car. So much so that that can consume us to make bad financial decisions just to have that car. What was a fantasy became a dream, became a desire, became a treasure. What about envying people who have those cars as well? So you've let those that darkness in and, and your treasure has become this sports car. And then you start to envy all those people that have sports cars and have the lifestyle where they can afford that type of car. That's darkness creeping in because we're allowing those sport, sporty fast cars to become treasure. It's not just cars or money, holidays, Amazon wish list, lists, houses, other people's looks other people's lives. Then there's, of course, there's the darkness of what you can look at, which is openly darkness, things like pornography. All of these things are things that we can watch and we can watch and we can watch. And the more we watch, the more we allow our hearts to be changed by what is coming into our lives. And the more we start to desire and need these things. More and more. And they shape the light and the darkness within us. Some of the films that we watch or how we watch other people 
Or even, as I say, watching pornography, you're allowing yourself to bring real darkness into your life in a way that doesn't just bring the darkness in, but it brings the darkness in a way that changes our hearts and changes our desires so that these things become treasure. Deep desires, addictions. How easily can our hearts change? How? By our eyes. What do we spend our time allowing into our body by what we watch and look at? Jesus knows how easily our hearts can be influenced by the darkness around us. Our eyes are key to this. Paul gave some great advice in Philippians 4.8, which says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is praiseworthy, um, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, what is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, I know that the advice that Paul gives here is think on such things. But how about looking at such things, too? Are the things we're looking at and spending time looking at, are they the things of God? Are they things in line with the kingdom of God? Are they in proportion to how much time we're spending looking at the things that bring us into the kingdom of God? Now, hear me. Some things are blatantly not of the kingdom of God. Things like pornography is an obvious example of this. And actually, that's something that to just stay away from. That's not like, oh, watch it a little bit, but don't let it consume you. No, it's wrong. It's bad. It brings darkness into your life willingly. Don't even stray there. But for some other things, it's not as clear. When getting a new car, for example, you need to look at new cars to do that. But again, it's about that word that we've mentioned so much in the Sermon on the Mount. It's about self-examination. Are we looking at new fast sporty cars because we need a new car? Or are we starting to feast upon a worldly dream that becomes bad for our hearts? that starts to shape a human desire, a human envy, a human craving for something. Now, that's not for me to say. That's between you and God. But be aware of and heed Jesus's warnings here and his teachings here. Your eyes, what you spend your time looking at and how you look at something and what you look at and how long you spend looking at it. These are all ways that can bring the darkness of the world into our hearts and change our desires from the godly things that we have here into the desires of the world, into the things of the darkness. We need to be careful. We need to be self-aware to help protect our hearts from this. That's why Jesus shares this so we can be careful, so we can listen to him and do all we can to protect our hearts. But the challenge is, as always, will we?